Hey athletes, we're going to talk about the differences in training your lower body and your upper body and a little bit of frequency with that. So, your lower body, imagine being able to walk 20 miles. You could probably do it, right? Your lower body can take abuse. It can take a lot of abuse. Your legs are very strong, plus they have a lot of endurance elements to them. So, training your lower body two, maybe even three times a week you can do it. You're going to be fine. Okay. As long as you have quality movements, you're not just destroying yourself and forcing yourself to come back a couple days later. As long as you're allowing your body to recover, you're getting the right nutrients, enough sleep. You can train your legs every day. Okay. I, I squat five days a week, not saying you have to, but it's doable. Okay. Again, you just have to take the steps in order to do it, but your upper body can handle a lot of volume. It can, you know, you can train your pecs twice a week. I used to. You can train your back twice a week. You certainly can. But it's not something you want to do every day. Your shoulders probably can't take it. So here's what I recommend when we're talking your upper body. I love doing upper body splits. So pushing and pulling on the same day. Why? Again, unless your goal is to be the biggest badass in the gym, you don't need to do a chest day. And even some professional bodybuilders, they do push pull days. So here's what I'm getting at for your upper body. So let's say it's Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday, I'm going to focus on a lot of pushing today. Okay. I'm going to do dips, I'm going to do bench press, I'm going to do push-ups, incline bench, shoulder presses, whatever. I'm going to do it with a bar, dumbbells, maybe just at home, whatever, okay? You might spend the first 20 minutes, ha half an hour, doing just pushing exercises, okay? Where that's all you do. Maybe you pick one, let's say it's a dip, okay, or a bench press, and you start with that, you're going to do your rep scheme, whether you're doing high volume, low volume, if you're trying to train for strength, whatever your goal is at that point, you're just going to focus all of your attention on that one exercise of push, let's say. Great. Then after that, I highly recommend alternating back and forth between pushing and pulling, giving your back some stimulus that second time a week can really help some change happen. And it keeps your metabolism revving high. You're constantly recovering it. And again, you're going to see some change really quickly, but it's still a push day. So by starting with that push and then maybe going from push-ups to pull-ups, maybe you do that a few sets. Then maybe you go into shoulder presses and a row of some sort, maybe a body weight row, whatever, going back and forth. And then maybe you finish with how many push-ups can I do? Great. Or how much tricep work can I do? Or maybe now it's time to isolate my shoulder, whatever, great. That's your push day. Then maybe three, four days later, let's say Friday, so you did push on Tuesday primarily. Friday you come in, now it's pull day. So let's say you spent a lot of effort on pull-ups on that Tuesday, even though it was your push day, you still did a lot of pull-ups. Great. Now on this Friday, let's focus primarily on rows, okay? On a body weight row, a bent over row, one arm row, whatever we're doing to activate that, that scapular region, pulling back through our lats, right? That middle of our back type motion. Maybe you do whatever rep schemes. Maybe you're doing three sets of eight, five sets of five, three sets of two, whatever, okay? If you're trying to train for strength or whatever your goal is. Then again, we're going to be alternating back and forth. So maybe we are, again, doing pull-ups. And now I did bench press on Tuesday with the bar. Maybe today I'm going to do it with dumbbells. Or maybe today I'm going to work incline. Or instead of being strapped to a, a bench, maybe I'm going to do dips where I'm going to be on a bar doing my dips that way. Okay, And then, again, alternating back and forth. It allows you to do a little bit of variety. It allows you to activate your pushing and pulling muscles twice in a week where, again, you emphasize push on one day and you emphasize pull on another. But again, it keeps things fun. It keeps things exciting because instead of having seven or eight pushing exercises on the same day, you can do four on Tuesday and the other three or four on Friday, right? Same with your pulls. It keeps things fun. It keeps you moving. And then you don't just completely destroy yourself, okay? Plus, the benefit in me being a trainer, this is what I'm always looking for is balance, okay? You can way over push on a Tuesday if all you're doing is chest. And then let's say you're trying to do back on a Thursday and your shoulders are still fatigued from Tuesday. 
it's really hard to balance it out and have symmetry on a pull day if you can't even give it 100%. So again, giving you that second day that of that week where you can alternate back and forth, you can have some balance. You're going to have less shoulder problems. You're going to have a more developed shoulder. And again, you don't have to do so much isolation work then and kind of waste your time unless your goal again is to be the biggest guy. Then you need to spend some time in those isolation exercises. But if that's not your goal to be the biggest, you can alternate from push to pull twice a week. You can do your legs two, maybe three times a week. Shoot, you've got a whole workout program right there. And it's going to help you be lean, be strong, and have some muscle too.